I come in the name of the Lord. The Pope just said that he's not going to uh, bless same-sex marriage, yeah? And because of that, it has really uh, been the spotlight of both the governing authorities and rulerships of the world and also the governing and authority rulerships of the religious spiritual aspect and because that has been at their minds it has trickled down and then engulfed the entire world so then now everybody knows about you know marriage the same-sex marriage yeah the homosexual marriage and all that stuff and then there's everyone talking about it those of the world and those who believe in God yeah that is now in the spotlight and with that is how the approval yeah and the uh, impartiality of faith can come through yeah it also will show the best the only and perfect way for you who have faith in Jesus and say you do to handle how to uh, abide in the command of God and o be obedient to that so and then uh, accomplish it in peace amidst everything else that whoever else in the faith can tell you you cannot do that because it says this yeah because the thing that you have to stand on is the one stone yeah because not one stone will be left on another that will not be shaken and that is the truth yeah the one stone and i'm talking about one simple least verse yeah because that's what people are saying they cannot do this because of this verse this is the verse that makes those things that everyone else has said and is standing on yeah imperfect because you have known what they said they have not known what you said and what you said is a thing that perfection has come on yeah all the other parts disappear the things that they now have faith in and are, are argumentative about have no power it is obsolete and partial it is in you it is in you written down innately your it doesn't bother you yeah because the thing that you are obeying is the will of God yeah and what that one thing is it says uh, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for it is God who will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral okay that right there and because of that there is conflict and the reason why you can trust that this one is the perfect thing that you can stand on in regards to that as one who has faith in Jesus and wants to be obedient to the will of God um, and correctly handle it, yeah, so that you can go on is because it produces peace. A peace in you that you're you're not conflicting within yourself like, I'm going to do this, but it does, it does say these things that those who are of the same faith have told me if I do do this, it says this and that I'm actually wrong. What do I do? Who do I listen to? How do I do that? It will make peace with that conflict in your mind. It will make peace with the governing authorities and even the religious authorities in the way that they have to handle these things, these things. And it will make peace with, in this sense, in this case, the homosexual agenda and the LGBTQ people and th uh, those type of people who are uh, fighting for that right of marriage and equality yeah marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for it is god who will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral okay so now understand yeah when those of the faith and now i'm talking to those who are of the faith who know the word of god have a faith in jesus but still they know the word of god they can spout out Bible verses and that's what they stand on yeah when those of the faith say it's only between a man and woman because uh, God has blessed them to procreate yeah and to uh, fill the earth and whatnot and therefore marriage should be is only for that purpose to procreate yeah it says so in Genesis that's what one type of argument people do true yeah 
imperfect, but imperfect. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, because it is for it is God who will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Yeah, the thing they're basing their faith on and will not budge, and therefore condemning those who are making a ruckus who don't even believe. Yeah, and already stand condemned. Yeah, and causing conflict is uh, the flesh aspect, yeah? They're looking at, oh, this is the only reason why people get married, yeah? Because God has made them so that they can come together and produce children, yeah? They are uh, short, one french fry short a Happy Meal, yet they are enjoying a full meal, acting as if it's fulfilled, yeah? And the reason why it's imperfect is because when the children of the resurrection, who God has made for to be his, holy and sacred and held in the highest esteem with them in mind since the before the beginning, yeah, before the creation of the world, they were with him. And in this time, as you can see, things are happening, it's being fulfilled, yeah. They will not be married, yeah, or get, be given in marriage. They will be like, like the angels in heaven, yeah. When people are then saying, well, marriage is uh, to honor the making of children so that a man you know, man and woman can have a higher honorability and blessing from God. When they say that, they have completely disregarded the children of the resurrection who will not be given in marriage or be married, yeah? And therefore are saying, because they will not be given in marriage or marriage and have then procreate, yeah, that they can never attain a higher honorability when they are the most sacred to God. They are literally made by God to be holy. They are being made perfect. And those who are being made holy and those who make holy are of the same family, yeah? And when they disregard them and reject them by basing it on the word of God in Genesis of an imperfect word, yeah, with so much zeal but lack of knowledge, then they have rejected God and they cannot stand, yeah? They are already cut off, yeah? They are not getting the bigger picture and they don't have enough faith to then be obedient to the will of God and what he has said, yeah? They're putting their own agenda in it and it's imperfect. That's why they're under a law which doesn't make anything perfect. The second one is about homosexuality, yeah? People are like, well, God made man and woman, and that it said, you know, homosexuality is a sin. Two, if two men lay together or whatnot, uh, it's a sin, and sodomy and all that stuff. It's just a Leviticus, and you can read about what happened with Lot, or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah? True. Yeah? You can read it. It does say that. Imperfect. Yeah? They're not made perfect. They're not made perfect or complete in love. Yeah? They are focusing their mind on the marriage bed, yeah? On the flesh of the what happens with the immorality of sexual unity, yeah? Of the flesh of that. That's what they're basing it on, and it has everything to do with discriminating and then them just hating people, yeah? It says, marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for it is God who will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. And when you tell someone that and they say, but God said homosexuality is a sin and it should not, so I'm not going to do that. I'm, I, I, it will be wrong of me to be to bless them into marriage, yeah? Yeah? You are completely missing the point and then completely disobeying God and then uh, transgressing by putting yourself in a seat of judgment and judging then where you stand and the reason you're standing, uh, judging, yeah? In the place that God has specifically said, I will be the judge who judges what happens in the marriage bed, what happens uh, to the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Not you, what you do, yeah? What you do is honor marriage to everyone, yeah? Marriage should be honored by all. Now what? Do you understand how they're imperfect? And with this one, yeah, you're honoring marriage to all, yeah? And then washing your hands of those things that you also know, yeah? And no longer having them reconsidered to cause you conflict inside. And therefore, peace, yeah? You have peace. 
and they stand condemned because they're imperfect. And what you're then producing is peace, and you are being made perfect in love, yeah? Uh, you're being obedient to what God has said, and you have listened, and you have done it, yeah? You have honored marriage to all, yeah? To all. Now, what that means, yeah, is now the mindset of those who are imperfect and are based on top of a faith in what is written in the old, obsolete, and soon-to-disappear law, what they have uh, now in their mind, and you will see this, yeah, is a, oh, now they're going to legalize bestiality. Now they're going to legalize pedophilia. Now you are connecting wickedness with God and you... Uh, your fault. You're the one who's false, yeah? You, uh, uh, stuff like that, yeah? They can condemn about what they see and um, have this radical type of thinking in their mind that is then on par with a delusion, yeah? The delusion, and they believe in that lie. The delusions have been sent. They do believe in that lie, and then they proclaim with what they see by the knowledge that they have in a complete, incomplete understanding and with a lot of zeal yeah so they are very dangerous and but they don't know yeah they're blind and do not stumble uh marriage should be honored by all not all is looking to be honored by marriage yeah in this sense if marriage should be honored by all yeah and uh it was I don't know, 16 years old, or not 16 year olds, yeah. Or, uh, you know, something like that, like, uh, well, you know what? It happens to be the same sex people, okay? The homosexuals are the ones who's asking for marriage, yeah? They have a faith that they deserve an equal right in the way that marriage is in the world, yeah? And because of that great faith in their right for an equalness and the right to then I love my partner, yeah? I he, he or she is my partner. I can love them, yeah? Their faith has caused them to come together and elevate their claim and overcome up to the very heads of the world in their faces so that now even the governing authorities and all the heads of the world over all of everybody, including the church heads of authority, now have to pay mind to what they're saying and bring them through the system and judge correctly, yeah? And do it, and it takes time, and then there's conflict, yeah? There's no peace. It's conflict, and then they're fighting out here. One's fighting to, be, to have the right. One's fighting against it by a faith. Both have a faith, yeah? Like that. There's no peace, yeah? There's no peace. You're not... Uh, it's not that you are... Now, uh, calling what is wrong, right, yeah? Calling what is evil, good. You're, it has nothing to do with homosexuals, yeah? Or same-sex people. It has nothing to do with sodomy, yeah? Those things, yeah? Whatever would then fall under sexually immoral and adulterer, yeah? And it is God who will judge. Those things are none of your fucking business, yeah? It's none of your business. And you have no right to be there. What you do is honor marriage, to those who seek it, yeah? They are the ones seeking it. And what you do in obedience is simply honor it, yeah? Don't try the, to sit there and justify and then conflict in your mind like, should I or should I not? The perfect of honoring marriage for all is as simple and is the least that you can do to accomplish so much great things that is in store for you in the glory of the new covenant and into the kingdom of eternal of the eternals yeah it's the marriage that you are honoring so in that sense be renewed of your mind and think bigger yeah think bigger in love and keep your mind in the things of God not the things of man yeah if pedophiles come together and they have great faith in pedophilia and they have a great faith that they deserve to be married two children yeah and they come together and they're in the streets and they are fighting and they are overcoming because their faith is great yeah all the way to the heads of authorities where then now the heads of authorities really have to consider what is at stake here yeah 
and there has been great conflict and whatnot, you would honor marriage to, pedof to the pedophiles. Yeah? Think about what I'm saying. Yeah? Don't think about, oh my gosh, pedof you, I would never do that. Yes, you would if you're obedient to God. It's not that you're honoring pedophiles. You're honoring marriage. You're honoring marriage to those who are asking. Now, think. Do you think pedophiles are going to group together and then demand such a thing in such a huge way that the world cannot stop them and they, they must be acknowledged? Yeah? Do you think they have that kind of boldness? Yeah? Faith will give you great strength. Yeah? Faith will give you boldness. Do you think pedophiles will do that? Yeah? And be realistic. Be in truth. They're not going to. Yeah? They won't get far. Not like that. And it, it... Yeah? Realistically. But that is what you have to, if you're obedient to the will of God, correctly, in perfectness, do. Yeah? Do you think people who think, I have the equal right to marry this... <laughs> this sheep or this cow or this horse and bestiality not a crime that they will all get together and proclaim in the streets and cause a conflict and protest and all that stuff all the way to the head yeah and demand marriage equality between me and my pet pig or something yeah if they did if they did you being obedient to the will of God would honor marriage for them yeah seems ridiculous to the world but to you who know, it is power, yeah? And look at what produces, peace. They're not conflicting and you're not being part of a problem, yeah? You're not being part of a problem that's making conflict. You have just promoted peace, including a self-sacrifice of your own self, knowing very well that it is not your thoughts that you are standing on, but what is written in the will of God. Yeah, he did say honor marriage for all. Honor, marriage should be honored for all. Everything else that they do, with that marriage is none of my business, but God will judge. God will judge them, yeah? God will be the judge of it. And I'm not hoping that, oh, God judges them harshly or whatnot. That's none of my business. God's judgment is God's judgment, and you don't know, yeah? You won't know. You would just re remain obedient to honoring marriage for all. Yeah, but are people gonna come together <laughs> with their horses and come together with their animals and take on the streets and then protest and protest and not be overcome by the world and then get to the heads of authorities and then have to be acknowledged and considered? Yeah, do you think that's gonna happen with people in bestiality or however that works? No, yeah, but with the same sex people, it has happened and they have asked and it has been elevated and it is in the face of everything of the world and in everyone's minds, yeah? So then, you do God's will. You honor marriage, yeah? That's what you do. You as a person do, yeah? Now, understand, do not do the same things that the Pharisees do, yeah? Do not do the same things that those who know all these scholarly things in the old law do, yeah? You can listen to them if you're under them, but don't do the same things they do. If the Pope has said, I will not do that, I will, to same-sex marriages, I will not give my blessing, yeah? Uh, they don't got, they don't, don't have, they do not have the approval to get married in the eyes of the Catholic Church, yeah? Don't do that. He has been set there as an authority figure for the benefit of the will of God and for those who are gods, yeah? Those who belong to God, I should say, yeah? The Pope does that, yeah? And you, knowing that he's done that, don't do the same thing he does, yeah? And don't co and, and neither do you condemn him, yeah? He has done it. That's what it is. It's being set up for the bigger thing, yeah? The bigger fulfillment of God's will, which you can see happening. And then it's going to accomplish, yeah? Which is not going to be a good thing, yeah? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, one of the things that has been written, must be fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled. But it doesn't mean that you have to be the one to get murdered by it, yeah? To kill, get killed or cast off or cut off or trampled on, yeah? Listen to what I'm saying, yeah? You are in peace. You have done it. You have correctly handled the word of truth. And you have found the, the one pebble in there that brings all the other ones that are not left on one another, yeah? In the word of God, uh, you have found the one that is the rock, yeah? Is the one that will not be shaken. And the ones who have believed in the old and obsolete have no power if you tell them that 
it is the marriage that you must do because it says marriage should be honored by all. And the thing, and then tell them and reveal to them that what they're concerning themselves in is going to be of the sexually immoral, yeah, and the adulterer, and of the marriage bed. And God has specifically said, God, He will be the judge of those things, the things that they're talking about and planting in, and then judging because they've judged, yeah. He will be the, the judge of that, which gives you then the confidence in the faith to obey what he has said and honor marriage for all, yeah? And if they don't listen to you, then you know they're cut off, yeah? They're the ones who will be trampled on because they're not promoting peace and they're in complete transgression to what uh, the, the word of God has said, the, perfect, the perfectness of the new covenant has said, yeah? And that's in Hebrews that it says that, yeah? When they go to the old, they become dull. A veil re remains on their face to the glory and power of the new covenant. They remain dull, yeah? And so, when you then bring that truth to them, you have just unveiled them. And then it is their choice whether or not they want to listen to you, yeah? And it has nothing to do with, oh, God has made them that way, yeah? It's a free will. Free will is reign supreme. God has made certain things to happen in the times that he has. And how that those times work is when the people who are prepare, supposedly preparing their hearts and proclaiming all these things, yeah, have reached a certain point and there's enough of them that they then are the things that will fulfill that, yeah? And if those people then do not listen to you, they have no longer a, an excuse for the reasons why they're doing that. They can still go on, yeah? And something dramatic might not just not happen in that one moment. It's not like they're going to hear your words and be like, I'm so convicted by what you said. You're so right. Yeah. They will condemn you and they will persecute you and call you all sorts of names because you have come in righteousness. Yeah. And you're blessed. Just know that. Yeah. It's already been written. You don't hunger and thirst for righteousness. You are fulfilled in this time of fulfillment. And that's what gives you the uh, power to proclaim the light to those in the darkness. Yeah. So that now... There is no excuse for them to veil their face. But whenever you talk about the Old Covenant and that Old Covenant is then believed in, a veil covers your face and you then be, become dull until you're just dark. And then a delusion happens where you believe in that lie and then you see the light as dark. The darkness that is you is light and you don't know that, yeah? And everything that you say, the Holy Spirit told me and stuff, is not the Holy Spirit. That's just your own instincts and you don't, you don't know. You cannot know. You don't know, yeah? Uh, you're cut off. And they can only be cut off is when you bring that truth to them, yeah? If no one has done that, yeah, they won't be guilty. They will, will never be guilty of that, yeah? Of believing in something that is imperfect. But because you have done what nobody else has done, they have now no excuse for their sin. And so they cannot now say, I believe in God, but then deny marriage, yeah? What they're doing is seeing what they're looking at and being like, oh, it's homosexuals, yeah? And if you're supposed to do this in faith, because it's faith that's becoming impartial, then it's not by what you see, yeah? It's by believing in what is unseen, what is not seen. And what is not seen in the marriage aspect of this homosexual agenda is the marriage bed, the adulterer, and what happens in their private lives, which is none of your business, yeah? That's the stuff that is uh, not seen, but you're looking at, yeah? And then you're judging them by what you're seeing, yeah? You have faith in God, and sure, they can get married, yeah? <laughs> Honor it. Honor it and be obedient, and you'll see so much good happen for you, yeah? Not for... The not for anything other than the peace that can be promoted, yeah? Uh, those who sow in peace, harvest of righteousness can be produced. And if you're a peacemaker and peacekeeper, then you are a, ch a child of God, yeah? You are children of God, sons of God. Um, and in this time of the closing of the Gentiles, the impartiality of faith is very important to understand because in the anointing of Matthew and Mark, there is an anointing that Jesus was prepared, yeah, for burial, yeah? Those things are now fulfilled, yeah? The memory of those who anointed him in Matthew and Mark fulfilled, as it said, where this gospel is preached, the memory of them will be fulfilled, yeah? 
They were preparing the head and then preparing the head and body, yeah? Both times Jesus spoke in Matthew Mark, it was the body. He said, my body, yeah? There's these subtle differences that is so important to understand. Now, Luke, yeah, comes to more specific things. Jesus was invited to a Pharisee's house, yeah, invited in honor. So Jesus came because whoever asks, he will do, yeah, he will come. Uh, and he will come in and sit at the table with you and eat and you with him and stuff, yeah. It was a Pharisee who invited him and uh, it, in this sense, it said a woman of the city who was a known sinner, yeah. A woman of the city, which means a woman who is part of the world, yeah, that, that big, huge economic type of thing yeah and the world even viewed her and known her to be a sinner because they have seen her yeah she heard that Jesus was there she went there and she then you know sat at his feet and cried on his feet and uh, dried her his uh, feet with her hair then put perfume on his feet and didn't stop kissing him and the Pharisee saw this and then by what he saw he judged who was at his table yeah and said if he is who he said he was he would never have let this lady touch him because and he would know who what type of person she is yeah he, her she is a sinner and jesus already knows people's hearts yeah he knows your heart he doesn't need your full testimony yeah and so do his children those who are his those who walk like him and those who have the power in this time to do it you can't no one can say you don't know me you don't know my heart yeah <laughs> yeah you do as soon as you open your mouth we we know we know we know the words of the Father and we'll know if his love is in you or not, yeah? And then we will t we'll tell you the truth. Uh, but the Pharisee then said that and Jesus' response to the, to the Pharisee was uh, a parable, yeah? And in that parable was then the re revelation that if you love greatly, it means that you have been forgiven greatly. And if you can only love little, it means that you have only been forgiven little yeah and then uh, explains to the Pharisee in every step that since he got there the Pharisee has you know invited him in or whatever but since he's since Jesus been there this woman has not stopped doing these things to him and showing him great love she has just been kissing my feet and anointed my feet and did all this stuff like I came in and you didn't even do any of that stuff and she's done all that and has shown great love yeah to his feet only his feet there's no mention of the body or the head anointed his feet yeah and then Jesus told the lady your sins are forgiven because of your great love that you have shown and your faith has saved you now go in peace your faith has saved you yeah and that's why there's an impartiality of faith because as you know God saves even the wicked for the day of whatever, yeah? God saves everything. Everything that comes through the Father is his servant. And that's why mercy and grace, yeah? And everything is an impartial. It's been saved, whether you can see it or not, yeah? But you can't see it because wicked people are here and they're enjoying the benefits of life just as much as other people. And those who are still are not wicked and trying to do a good walk is still suffering the same as the world yeah it's uh impartiality um faith has saved her yeah so even if someone has faith in jesus yeah they're saved and even if somebody has faith yet does not believe in jesus and stands condemned as they have faith yeah they're saved their faith has saved them and then you have faith, those who know this, yeah, this knowledge and is not part of the world, but is part of the world. You have faith to come down to the feet and be among them to impartialize the will of God because you do what is right and good to the Father's will. Your mind is always on the Father's will, not in the things of men. And then how to do that in peace, yeah, there's a level of maturity in the righteousness of God that comes with that kind of power of discernment and wisdom guidance yeah uh, it you've been trained in it until made perfect yeah uh, then faith is impartial faith has saved them yeah and by the measure of love that you can show your neighbor yeah in great love love can fulfill the law 
we know that. Google it, yeah? By that measure of the loving your neighbor as yourself, yeah? Love can fulfill the law, yeah? They don't have to believe in Jesus in this time because as where we are, the times of the Gentiles are being cut off in. The light of the gospel impartial. And so it's at the feet. And as you know, enemies are at the feet. The world is at the feet, yeah? The footstool is the feet, yeah? And that is where everything is. And in this small little example that is in the mind of the world with the same-sex marriage, yeah? You honor marriage. You cut the same-sex thing completely out of your mind because that's none of your business. And trust God that he will judge whatever he, he can know about those things, yeah? Which you do not know and you have no business in, yeah? As you have obeyed what he said in faith to do that, yeah? And honored the marriage when requested, yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah? And in faith, in faith, in faith, these people are standing on the old, no power, impartial, and being dull, causing conflict in faith. The people who don't even believe in Jesus, they are overcoming them and you know, getting somewhere in their equality of how they asked about marriage in faith to that because that's what's driving them. You have faith and you by faith are cutting off the old, yeah, and no longer living on the immature elementary teachings that the majority of those in the faith know and going on in faith into the new mature food that will give you more strength and I mean, just in the least amount, will give you everything else, and you can go forward. It's it's in that small little thing you can do. It gives you everything. It gives you so much, yeah. And anything then done in faith is not a sin, and to sin, yeah. And when I say that, the impartiality of sin, there's a difference, yeah. But those are in other videos. This is about the impartiality of faith, yeah, and um. Uh, discovering about bringing this Hebrew the thing in Hebrews about honoring marriage why that is the right thing that you actually do that is the right thing you do you must do that just do it yeah just do that part honor marriage to those who ask yeah because it is obedience to God yeah and everything else that you had thought before in your basic things none of your business none of your business yeah get your mind out of the gutter of the world like everybody all the rest of the broad majority of those in the faith yeah the broad majority of those in the faith get your mind out of the gutter because their hearts are evil yeah their hearts are wicked and they don't even understand why they stumble they are all about the flesh they are all about what they can see and their sensualities yeah their sensualities there's not fulfilled they're imperfect and they're only remaining dull darkness and about to get cut off and they've had the same amount of time that everyone else has had to understand this yeah and it wasn't they were made for that and you were made for this you have done it correctly, and since you were justified in this time, and the things have happened in the Father's time, yeah, those who are justified correctly will then be elevated and be able. And those who are not justified correctly will then be put in that place, everyone in their places, to be the things that need to be fulfilled, like the persecutions, or like when it says, people will die, but you, you will be persecuted, you'll be trampled, yeah? There are the ones that are going to be trampled because they haven't handled correctly the word of truth. You are not going to be trampled because you're now saved because you love him and have obeyed him, yeah, in faith, yeah? And you have done it correctly so that in this time that's justified, you're good, yeah? You're good and everything else works to your benefit, yeah? You leave them there, but you do tell them the truth. And if you can understand what I'm saying, just do it, yeah? And then hold that to your heart and know that what I'm speaking to you is the truth. It is perfect. It perfects everything. It's not with this part or this part, yeah? When perfection comes, all the parts disappear, yeah? It's a new creation. That one thing in that example of the world in this time will do much good for you and you can go in peace, yeah? And faith impartial, sin impartial, no judgment should be coming from you and continue in peace so that you can patiently endure, yeah? And uh, so I come in the name of the Lord and I hope that makes uh brings light to you